محمد رسول الله لا اله الا الله علي ولي No idea. Subhanallah. I came and spoke a few years back in Ramadan. And mashallah, we had uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Haider uh, Maula who was reciting that night in, in uh, Arabic. And I used to love to listen to his lectures in Arabic. He was a beautiful reciter. So I used to have a habit that after I speak my English, I give my English lecture, I would sit and I would listen to him. That evening, it was a, it was a packed house, alhamdulillah. That evening, I felt extremely hot. For some odd reason, it wasn't really hot in the room, but I just felt an enormous amount of heat. And I said, I have to get out of this room right now. And I walked out and I went outside. And outside there were a few brothers standing, and this boy, this brother, was standing outside with his friends. And he from far approached me. Apparently he was listening to the lectures. He came to me, shook hands with me in a very civil manner. He says, can I ask you a few questions? I'm a Christian but I like your lectures, I want to ask more questions to you. I said, sure. And we got into a conversation. It started with about five people, it grew to over 100 people. There was a huge circle standing there. Everybody was listening to this conversation between me and him. Look, history in the making, subhanAllah. And I stood so there, held his hands, and as we were talking, I would touch his shoulder. I said, you have a good point. And he would bring an argument about the Bible, and I would counter it from the Bible, and I'd say, look, every argument I've given you, you take it to your superiors check it if it's wrong i'll meet you again and you can correct me he said okay and we discussed and it was a very it was the most beautiful night subhanallah outside it was warm outside it was crowded it was quiet i held his hand he looked at me and i felt the sincerity in his heart he looked at me he said what you're saying makes sense i said it's up to you do what you want we shook hands and we left in Muharram, I came to speak again, and I was speaking at Fordson. And my first lecture, I remember, Fordson High School. I got off my first lecture, I got off the stage, and this boy came and shook my hands. And I shook hands with him, I said, George. He says, you remember my name? I said, yeah, I remember your name. His name was George. He shook my hands, he says, no, my name is not George. My name is Abbas. He shook hands with me, he hugged me, he says, my name is not George anymore, my name is Abbas. I said, really, mashallah, subhanallah. I said, why did you choose the name Abbas? He said, Abbas helped the Imam. I want to help Islam. I want to help the Imams. That's why I like, I said, here's a young 17 year old Christian boy who's become a believer overnight. It's not me. People ask, have you made people Muslims? I said, I'm still trying to make myself a better Muslim, so please. Allah inspires, but it takes a collection of people to get together and each one instills the goodness in their hearts. You see, this is very important in our communities, even among our non-Christian, our own brothers, brothers and sisters, let's be nice to each other, care for each other, show love and affection to each other the way our Imams showed us and see how we will change each other. This young boy became a Muslim and he attended our camp. He was so helpful. And every time I would get into gatherings, he would be there. And he was one of the sharpest persons I ever met. Sharp, philosopher, really understood the dimensions of deen. But if you listen to him, he would always quote the Quran and Ahlul Bayt. Quran and Ahlul Bayt. I said, look at this boy. How he has grounded himself by the same command the Prophet left. In nitarikun fikum al-thaqalain, kitabullahu aitrati Ahlul Bayt. Subhanallah. This is a boy, 14 centuries later, one event touches his heart so much, he's become a believer. Now in his family, he wasn't accepted as a Muslim, so he was silent. Imagine his struggles. Imagine his struggles, brothers and sisters, that you and I, we, you know, it's very interesting, many, many times people say, so did this person become a Muslim? When you talk to him, did he become a Muslim? People ask me, when you spoke to Dan Barker in this debate between the atheist and yourself, did he become a Muslim? I said, what's the difference whether he became a Muslim? No, I'm curious to know. I said, what if he did? Oh, I'd be so happy. I said, okay, you'd be happy? Think about it. And that's a great thing. All of us should be happy. How much are we willing to change for a few things in our house? If I speak to my brother and sister and say, brother, let's change this. Well, my family is not like that. You know, it has a bad habit. And if, if I do this, it'll be very difficult. 
you know, my life will be very difficult, and then I will lose my friends. But we are all eager to see non-Muslims become Muslims. You think it's a joke for them to become Muslims? They have families, they have societies, they have ways of lives too. They have to abandon all of that to become Muslims, and we're all smiling. Yet for us to change a little bit of Islam, we give a thousand excuses. Look at the rationale. When someone says, why don't we become better? Well, I have a lot of problems, you know, if I wear hijab, my, my family will come against me. Oh, but how about that person who reverted to Islam? Really? Mashallah. Mashallah what? That person has gone through hell to become a Muslim. He is a role model for you and me. That to become a Muslim from non-Muslim is the most difficult thing to do. Let us make it easy for them. That's why my honor goes out to such people. That while the family is against you, they are silent in their hearts, vibrating towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their iman is towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I believe Allah loved him so much. This is my belief, and I will end tonight with this. I believe Allah loved him so much. His heart was so pure that he reached 19 years of age, he became ill. And Allah took him away from this world. He died last year, as you know, his departure. And those brothers had du'as for him. We, they, they used to sit together and read Josh and Kabir. To me, what was most gratifying was not his living or his death. For we all have to go back to Allah. But the connection between brothers who got together in the dark of the night reading dua for a brother who not, nobody knows in the community but they are praying for his safety and grace. That person will be a witness on judgment day that Allah, I came towards you in Dearborn because there was a group of brothers that touched my heart. Allah, I become your soldier and you took me early. You took my life early for you must have loved me to protect me from some danger that may lie ahead. But I have left a legacy behind. And you and I must be touched by that. That's why when I stand on these podiums up here, and when I see that sparkle of light, it just keeps me going. And Allah says to me, look at the response people will give you when you recite my verses.